Today, we're going to scratch the surface on the biggest changes to high tier collectibles that have come about as a result of CS2. We got everything from factory new gloves to field tested gloves looking painfully similar to certain knives where the base versions look better than some of the most coveted items in the game. Since the launch of CS2, skins have been all over the place. Battle scarred vice gloves looking factory new, factory new skins looking battle scarred, stickers being scuffed, clipped, wrongly positioned, the list goes on. Now that 90% have been somewhat fixed or at least adjusted and updates aren't happening as frequently, we are not as hopeful for further changes. This video is going to cover the aftermath of these adjustments that Valve has made. Right here we have a pair of factory new Pandora's gloves, a staple of high-end collecting. The lowest listed pair is currently $45,000. And right here we have a pair of 0.16 field tested Pandora's gloves. Virtually no difference. However, the price difference is $40,000. Pandora's were never the gloves with the most obvious wear difference. That being said, CS2 changes are blatant when observing vice gloves. We will give you five seconds to guess the float on this pair of vice gloves. Surely factory new. Wrong. They are field tested 0.15. Much like Pandora's, vice gloves have been some of the, if not the most desired gloves in all of CSGO. Especially the flawless pairs. And we're mostly talking about the knuckles being perfect, so no scratching. Now it's extremely easy to get a pair of flawless vice gloves. All factory new pairs are now flawless, many minimal wear and in field tested as this example shows. While there's a little wear on the finger, this would pretty much be classified as a flawless pair in CSGO. While it's great that nicer looking gloves become more affordable, it has obviously ruined a lot of the collectability surrounding vice gloves and buried the prestige of having a flawless pair. To emphasize these changes, these are a pair of factory new hedge mazes that are worth $25,000. And here is a pair of 0.15 field tested that are worth $4,000. Virtually no difference. And now this is great for newer players looking to get their dream gloves at a cheaper price. But the only reason these gloves have this price difference is because of legacy pricing from CSGO. If these gloves released today in this state, the price differential wouldn't be anywhere near this. And look, if 137 gloves are unboxed, statistically only one of these pairs will be factory new. For that pair to then look identical to the most common field tested pair is outright depressing. So, what about knives? When talking about high tier collecting, the knives that you would normally bring up are sapphires, rubies, emeralds, and of course the highest end blue gems. Out of these though, the Sapphire is probably the biggest loser in CS2. And here are three different Talon Dopplers that I would argue casuals and even some experienced traders can't tell which one is actually a Sapphire. As you can tell, these all look dreadfully similar. The differences are not pronounced enough throughout the knives. I shouldn't be in a random premiere match and have to question whether or not something is a Sapphire or not. Recently, when Jesus unboxed a Sapphire, none of us were even sure if it was a Sapphire or not. It's also worth mentioning that rubies, sapphires, and emeralds were always known by having one solid color. And actually, in recent time, there has been a lot of knives that received a large amount of overpay because of the lack of dark spots. Now, sapphires have light blue, cyan, purple, dark blue, blue, much like phase 3 and 4. They no longer feel like a base high tier item, they just feel like another Doppler face because of how similar they all are. To really showcase this, take a look at how the M9 sapphire looks with Pandora's gloves now, and compare that to how it looked in CSGO. The difference is huge. What's interesting is the only gem knife that had color variation in CSGO was the Black Pearl with the collectible glacier patterns. Now it has no color variation at all, it's just kind of purple. Looking at a combo from CSGO with an M9 Sapphire and the current Black Pearl and CS2, we actually have almost identical looking knives. So what's up with all this? The positive aspect of the changes CS2 has brought us to high tier items is that end game looking combos are much more affordable. However, many of the high tier items which undoubtedly served as staples of CSGO collecting are being outshined by, well, regular floor priced items. An example here is the most expensive item in CSGO, the 387 Karambit Blue Gem in Factory New, with the famous $1.5 million decline bid next to, well, a $1,200 Karambit Gamma Doppler Phase 1. Um, I don't think I really need to say anything here. None of the doublet faces look anything like what they did in the past. So had you bought a face 2 to match with your green gloves? Unlucky, because your knife is now cyan. Another high tier and insanely collectible knife in CSGO was the first Max Fire Nice Karambit pattern 412. Epidemic actually owns one of these, bought for $25,000, and is now being outshined by a uh, Karambit Doppler Phase 1. 
Make of it what you want, but many high tier items in CS2 would not be priced this way if it wasn't for their appearance in CSGO and collector's hopefulness in seeing changes happen. If this wasn't the case, a Sapphire wouldn't cost 10k when it looks like a regular Doppler. A pair of factory new hedge maces wouldn't cost 25k when a field tested pair looks identical. You get the picture. To be clear, there's no issues with skins looking better. It's something I think we all wanted in CS2 since the release was first announced. There's also no issue with good items becoming more affordable for more people. But it's genuinely sad to see some of the rare and most coveted items in CSGO losing their appeal. 